is an easy to work with and inexpensive protein to make weeknight meals. Even with high grocery prices, I can still find ground beef for $3.99 a pound, sometimes as low as $2.97 a pound. I don't necessarily see the days of $1.97 a pound, but $3, $4 a pound is a really good price. I like to buy mine in larger packages, break them up into small packages, and put them right into my freezer. That way, I have ground beef on the ready whenever I need it. So it's super helpful to have an arsenal of recipes ready to go. And today I'm sharing some of my favorites with you. This first one is Make That Again Hamburger Casserole. And I love myself a uh, make ahead casserole that is super easy. One of my go-to tips for nights when you just don't feel like cooking is to use a bag salad mix and frozen garlic bread. So I just added that to that and it really brought things up a notch. I was able to just get this casserole started earlier in the day so that when it was time to eat, I could just pop it in the oven. I just browned up some ground beef and boiled some bow tie pasta. You can use whatever type of pasta that you like. And once my beef was done browning, I drained the fat and then just added a little bit of the Auntie Nono's Everything Seasoning. You can just use garlic powder, salt, and pepper for this as well. For the casserole, you can just grease and mix everything right in the casserole dish so you have less dishes. You want about a cup of cheddar cheese and a cup of mozzarella cheese, then one can of tomato soup. And the recipe actually called for two. I didn't have two, so I just ended up adding in a little bit of marinara sauce instead. But if you just have two cans of tomato soup, that'll do it. I ended up adding extra stuff because I had some Alfredo sauce and I ended up having some like a little bit of like Rotel leftover and some regular tomato sauce. And I was like, I'm gonna throw that all in there because it's just, how, how can you go wrong with that stuff? I had it on hand and I just didn't want it to go bad. So I might as well use it, right? So it's just a reminder to, you know, if you wanna add things to recipe, just go for it. And then you just mix in your pasta right into that casserole dish. This made a full nine by 13. It was a little bit, um, you know, full to mix, but I still didn't want to use an extra bowl. I still felt good about the fact that I was just using one casserole dish and making it easy on myself. And then you want to top this with about another cup of mozzarella and cheddar and cover it in tin foil. And we're going to bake it at 375 degrees for about 35 minutes. And then you can take the tin foil off and cook it for another 10 minutes to really brown up the top. This was a huge hit. I just served this with a bag of Caesar salad mix and some Texas toast and the family loved it. We kind of like the pulled pork, couldn't, couldn't stop eating it, kept going back for seconds. But the good news with how much there was in this casserole is I had a day's worth of leftovers. So my husband had lunch for the next couple days and Benjamin actually loved it for lunch as well. 10 out of 10. Is that good? Mm-hmm. How about the salad? Mm, uh, 10 out of 10. How about the garlic bread? 10 out of 10. Thanks, Tommy. Brandy said 10 out of 10. Are you going to try the pasta too? Mm -hmm. Next meal is called 15 minute one pot lasagna. You're looking at all the flavors, tastes, all the greatness that is lasagna for a lot less time and a lot less hassle. We are setting the timer to 15 minutes and giving this a shot. Luckily, the only chopping that you need to do is dice one whole onion, then heat two tablespoons of oil in a large skillet over medium heat. Add your onion and about a pound of ground beef, and then you wanna cook that until your beef is fully cooked through. And while that was cooking, I just opened up all the cans and stuff, all the ingredients that I needed, and I'm setting my uh, spices into a bowl, so I'm ready to go with those too. I've got a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of dried basil, and a half a teaspoon of oregano. And I'm also gonna add a sprinkle of red pepper flakes. Then you want to drain the grease. I'm just going to use a pair of tongs and some paper towels, and I find that that works really well. Then add in a half a cup of water, eight ounces of pasta. I used this Jamelli. It ended up taking longer to cook, I think, because I used the Jamelli. So I would actually just break up pieces of lasagna noodle if I was going to do this again. Then one can of diced tomatoes undrained. You want to make sure those are not drained. And one cup of pasta sauce. Then you can add in all of those seasonings we put together. And then I did a nice generous sprinkle of the Auntie Nono's Everything Seasoning instead of salt and pepper. Now at this point, I only had five minutes left and the recipe says that you wanna let this cook for 10. So we were already kind of off on how long it just took to dice up those onions and cook that ground beef. So 
I'm thinking it's gonna take at least 20 minutes for the recipe. Because I used the Jamelli noodles, I think because they were tighter together, it actually took me another five. So it was a total of 25 minutes to make the recipe. Still a very fast recipe, especially for what you get. So I was still very pleased with it, but it's definitely not as advertised a 15 minute one pot meal. So yes, once this is simmering, reduce your heat to low, let it cook for 10 minutes or until the pasta is fully cooked through. Then you wanna add one cup of mozzarella cheese and optionally, which I would totally do, you're gonna add a third a cup of ricotta cheese. Mix everything together, let everything get warmed through and the cheese melts. Then you can top it with another cup of mozzarella cheese and serve. It is absolutely delicious. Like I said, all the flavors of lasagna without all the fuss. It is a total winner, although it didn't quite come in at 15 minutes. Once everything was mixed together, I just sprinkled it with some mozzarella cheese, let that melt, and enjoyed. This bacon cheeseburger tater tot bake has all the flavors of a summer cheeseburger, but in that cozy casserole format. So it's perfect for the fall and winter when it's colder outside, but you kind of still want that grilling flavor. It gives you the best of both worlds. You wanna start by cooking up some bacon or you can have fully cooked bacon slices or even bacon bits that you already have. You want about 12 slices. I used just a pound and that worked out fine. And then I have one large onion. I'm just gonna dice that. And then in a pan over medium heat, you want two pounds of ground beef or I think ground turkey would work out just fine in this as well. That would taste delicious. And you wanna brown that with about a cup of the onion. So you do wanna set aside some of the onion because we're gonna put some raw onion on top, kind of like you would on a cheeseburger. And you cook that until the beef is no longer pink and is tender. That took me about eight minutes. Then you do wanna drain off your meat. Add in one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of dry mustard, about a cup of tomato sauce. I think it just meant like plain tomato sauce, but I had like marinara sauce in my fridge that I wanted to use up. So I use that, you know, more flavor, no fail. And then eight ounces of Velveeta cheese, or I ended up using the Clancy's Aldi version of Velveeta. So you can even just use the generic brand and it'll work out totally fine. And then you cook that all together and you really just wanna melt down that cheese and make sure everything gets mixed well. That's gonna take another six minutes for that to melt. You wanna grease a 13 by nine pan and pour in your beef mixture. You wanna sprinkle that with your pound of crumbled bacon and then two cups of cheddar cheese. As always, I'm using like the last bits of one type of cheese and then the rest of another. And hey, we're not measuring because we have the cheese on hand. Also, if you had less cheese or you want to change the type of cheese, it's going to be totally fine. This is a very relaxed recipe. Can you ever, you even use whatever your favorite type of cheese is to put on a cheeseburger? I bet American slices might be pretty good too. And then we're going to top this with frozen tater tots. So you just want to layer them in rows. And this is also a great make-ahead meal. So if you wanted to, you could put the tater tots on either last minute or you can even put them on now and then put it in the fridge. I think it would be fine. It might cook a little bit faster, but it's up to you how you want to do it. And then we are going to bake this at 400 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. And I actually did make this ahead. So I made it. I told my husband to put it in the oven at a certain time because I had taken my kids to a doctor's appointment. It came out of the oven right before we got back. It was perfect. And then I just topped it with some chopped pickles, tomato, and onions. So you wanna use the rest of the, your onion that's left over. About one Roma tomato is what I used and about a third a cup of chopped pickles. And that really just adds all that flavor to it. it kind of makes it more of like that fast foody flavor. So if you're not into that, you totally don't even have to put that over the top, but I feel like it really adds something extra. And the whole family was loving on this. This is a big win. It's like I said, it's like that comfort food, but it's also something that you already know. And it's a, it's a great comfort casserole. Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. yeah. what do you think, JJ? Can you give it a rating? Um, a 10 out of 10. Really good? Mm -hmm. That looks like a raisin. <laughs> okay, for this recipe, I chose what is called a hamburger pie. We're just gonna get started by chopping up an onion and that's the only like work that we're gonna need to do here. Forgive me, this is one of those days where I need to clean the, the cooktop, but it's just, we're already cooking. So we're just gonna leave it because reality is. So I'm just using what I have on hand and I've got beef here. Pulled this out of the freezer. So I bought ground chicken and the only issue with me is I don't really, because I have other recipes lined up within the same meal plan, I don't really have the ability to kind of cook the rest of the ground turkey and the ground 
uh, beef. And since I already had these in the freezer and then took them out of the freezer, I can't freeze them again. So I'm just gonna cook a pound of each, but yes, the original recipe is just a half pound of each and it definitely would make it more budget friendly. And let's not forget our onions. The next part of this, this is super pantry friendly and easy is we're just making box mashed potatoes. No, I don't have the complete potatoes. So we're gonna pour in the flakes, then a half a cup of milk, and I put uh, two tablespoons of butter in here with salt, water, you know, I followed the instructions on the non-complete potato flakes, but if you have complete potatoes, even easier, just add water. And then we're gonna put that kind of over the top of the casserole, but we're not done with the insides yet, so hold on. To this, we're adding two cans of French style drained green beans and a can of tomato soup. Again, things that you probably already have in your pantry, easy peasy. My only thought is because I'm doing an extra pound of meat, if I should add extra tomato soup, I'm gonna give this a stir and see how I feel. I definitely don't wanna under season it. So I don't think that you have to add another can of soup, but I'm going to, because I think it's just gonna give it more flavor and make it even more delicious. All right, I ended up just adding half a can, which is really perfect. Like if I added more, I feel like it'd be too soupy and the flavor's great. So it seems like I'm gonna be having a grilled cheese and tomato soup tomorrow, which I'm not mad about. That sounds like a good lunch to me. And we're just gonna pour this in a casserole dish, probably nine by 13. I might need to go bigger just because I put so much meat in here. We're gonna cover it with our mashed potatoes and then sprinkle on some shredded cheddar cheese. The great thing about this is you can make as much or as little mashed potatoes as you want really. So I just made four servings and then spread it across. This could very easily feed eight to 10. It's just not heavy on the mashed potatoes. But when you're making a, a potato, you know, an instant mashed potato, just load it on if you wanna do that or go less, your choice. And then same with the cheese, you can put as much or as little as you want on. I'm using shredded cheddar, but you could use mozzarella, Colby Jack, whatever you have on hand. So since the bottom of this is already warm, everything but the cheese is kind of cooked. We're gonna put this in the oven at 350 degrees until it is caught bubbly cheesy, which is gonna be probably about 20 minutes is my guess, but we're gonna check on it in 20 and see. So I definitely know that it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what you said. It'll be bubbly and ready. It's ready. It looks delicious. I give it a five out of five. Yeah, kids are very much enjoying I this. See Dan and I already cleared our place. I know how to awesome. count to 100 really fast. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. I think that's off. And you said it was a five out of five, did it? Uh huh. Awesome. Yeah, this is delicious. I can see how this really fed a crowd. Next up is a Sloppy Joe garlic bread pizza. Okay, we are improvising tonight. I have some garlic bread. I did take this out of the freezer, got it on clearance, popped it in the freezer so I could use it whenever I wanted. Some leftover ground beef from my kid's birthday party. We didn't use it to make burgers. Tommy's going through the chips over there, so he's being loud. Sloppy Joe sauce. Had this forever and some leftover cheese also from the birthday party. We are gonna make garlic bread sloppy joe pizza. It's gonna be great. Simple, delicious, no one's gonna complain, right? Right. All right, yeah, so we're just gonna brown up this ground beef and follow the instructions on our sloppy joe package. It's also another one of those days that I'm fairly certain I clean the house all day, yet it still feels like a complete disaster. I'm not mad, I love them, it's just a feeling. Comment below if you know the feeling. And subscribe if you want to commiserate. Well, commiserate means it's bad. Like I said, it's good, but you know, you want to be buds, we'll be buds. So the package just says to brown up the ground beef, drain it. I'm just using a paper towel and then just add in the sauce and you're pretty much done with the sloppy joe mixture. And then I'm just gonna pop this in the oven according to the package instructions and probably cook it for a little less than 10 minutes, but I do wanna cook it beforehand because this will be all cooked. And then we're just gonna uh, top the garlic bread with the sloppy joe stuff, put some cheese on top of that. I am gonna shred up the cheese uh, that was like in the little blocks. We'll see how that goes, but we'll do our best to kind of make it like a nice topping. And then I'm actually just probably, I might even broil it or I might just turn the heat up really high. 
And um, we're just gonna cook it so that the cheese gets melted and it should be delicious. So I did end up broiling this and holy smokes, it smells insane and it looks so good. This was a good choice. So you do just wanna watch this carefully so it doesn't burn. It was maybe two minutes. I mean, it maybe could have, if you wanted like to have that little like blistered cheese, you could have gone a little longer, but I didn't want the crust to burn here. So either way, I'm gonna slice these up. We're gonna serve it with some uh, leftover salad that I also have from the party. Thank goodness we have some veggies and um, we're gonna enjoy it. to make Big Mac bowls or Big Mac in a bowl, something like that. Uh, tonight, I've got this half an onion from something from last week, so it's a perfect opportunity to use it. We're gonna just chop it really small. We're also gonna dice up some tomatoes. I've got, it's like what's left over of some pickles, and I'm gonna chop these up and shred some cheddar cheese. And while all of this is happening, we're gonna be browning ground beef in a pan. We're just gonna brown it with salt and pepper. I'm gonna slice up, or yeah, slice up some lettuce. Now you could use iceberg, but I ended up buying romaine just because I like it better. And then we're gonna assemble our bowls, just romaine lettuce, top it with all the toppings that you like. I like everything on mine. And I'm gonna use just a regular Thousand Island dressing but you can make up your own Big Mac sauce. I'll make sure to put a recipe for that in the description box. These were so good. I highly recommend giving them a shot. Pretty much anything with the name Big Mac in the name is gonna be delicious. And the kids loved them too. Tommy even said, he's like, next time I go to McDonald's, I'm getting a Big Mac. He's finally understanding what a Big Mac is, but quite good and also pretty healthy. This one's gonna be the last one for this video, but no worries. I have a whole playlist of cooking with pantry friendly ingredients right here. Check it out.